No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm tapping back in with my man, Doggy Style. Yes, sir. We in this thing. How you feeling, man? I'm living, bro. Can't complain. I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? Everything's going good. Still grinding. I noticed that you, like, really drop a lot of music. Like, you just, a lot of dudes, they just kind of get stagnant at some point and just kind of stop releasing shit. But it seems like you've you've grown accustomed to just kind of constantly keeping your foot on the gas. I got to, especially being independent, bro. I got to, I got to, I got to keep doing that because I don't have nobody behind me. So mm. everything I put out, I just got to keep dropping. I low key slow down, bro. Oh, okay. And you, the, the, it's funny that you say stagnant because I've been stagnant, but it's not me. I just like I've been shadow being. I've been a lot of these things, bro. But I still keep it cracking, bro. Mm. And funny to be me, I'm still doing good mm. five years later. You know what I'm saying? So definitely. Yeah, because, I mean, do you feel, do you just have, like, this assumption that if you just keep making music and dropping music that you're going to find the one song that's yes. going to change your life? Because it's happened to you basically before, too. Yes. You drop, like, a random song, it gets 10 million views, all of a sudden your whole life is different. Yes, that's facts. That's funny, I was just talking with my boy Sav, like, nigga, we're going to find the one. Because it's like, they always want me, like, they be wanting me to stay on that gangster shit. A nigga be trying to change it up a little bit because I feel like that puts me in a box, bro. Like, I still keep it gangster, but try to switch it up where it could be like mainstream music where anybody could listen to it. Mm. But it just seemed like, I don't know, I, be, I just be throwing shit out. You know what I'm saying? Whatever hit hits. If it mm. don't, it don't. It's funny because I don't even promote my music like that. Like, mm. I don't put money behind my shit. Like, I don't do Google ads or none of that shit. I just let God work his way. You a lot of me? people overthink that process and they like don't want to release music. Even big artists will like mm -hmm. not want to put an album out because if it doesn't sell X amount of copies, then they feel like they're going to be viewed as a failure. Same thing with a lot of dudes on YouTube. Like if they put something out, they're going to invest a bunch of money to gas up the view count or whatever yeah. to try to make themselves look a certain way. But it's, it's weird because it's like if you drop a song tomorrow that gets 10 million views, those people, it, it's going to help all your old videos, but very few people are going to be like, oh, well, he had to drop 20 music videos to get one to pop off. Shit, that's what happens. Sometimes it happens like that. Shit, yeah. what do you expect? Because you would think that you would make a, a dope-ass song and it would get overlooked. I got mm. so many songs that did get overlooked, but it didn't stop me because I know it's like, shit, it's, if you hit and you miss. Mm. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I ain't never put no, like, no promotion like behind my shit. Mm. Like I ain't never did that. I just let it. I just let it do what it do. Mm -hmm. We different popped off. I did not expect that shit to hit. What is that? Thirteen now. Right. Thirteen million. I did not expect that to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what took my my shit off. And I've been you know grinding ever since. But is it hit or miss? Some gonna go. Some ain't. And that's one thing is that it's almost like easy to get people interested when you're brand new. But once they're used to seeing you, that's where the real struggle actually begins yep. because then you have to like make good enough music that it'll get attention without with people already being familiar with who that's you are that's funny you saying that because i was thinking that a few days ago like damn like once you knew everybody want they want to get to know you because you're new they want to get to know what kind of nigga you is who you are where you come from well, you know they want to see what's next but like you said once you start becoming familiar and they get too used to you mm. now you got to keep them interested you mm. know what i'm saying and that tells you right there that if you if you really a fan or you not, unless I'm doing some crazy shit, then you should still support what I'm doing no matter what. If you a real fan, you know what I'm saying? Right. But so, okay, I've always kind of wondered because, you know, when you first came out, a lot of people were taken aback by the fact that you were keeping it so pure in terms of like West Coast <clears throat> hip hop and like really from the dress code to the beats to the flow to everything like you were just keeping it like super authentic and true to like a, a, a style of music that reminds a lot of people of the 90s and shit how much has your mind opened up because I, I did hear some songs especially the stuff that's more R&B mm -hmm. where I'm like oh okay he's kind of like diversifying and like stepping outside of his comfort zone right. a little bit Right, that's what I'm trying. I've been on, man. I've been trying to do different shit. I gotta get out of my comfort zone. And uh, sorry, you good? <laughs> Birds but, of a feather. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. I just, I just want to get a, a different type of fan, bro. Because I feel like, like everything, like they love that gangster shit. 
If I put out some gang banging shit, that shit hit a million views. Mm-hmm. But if I do some lovey dovey shit, oh yeah, that shit ain't gonna really do what is like, like I, what I'm used to doing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I got a song called T Whip. That song is a slapper. Mm-hmm. That it's probably like at three hundred k, but I feel like it should have been way more cracking because it's so much of a slapper. And it's more of a challenge though because it's like your fan base has been trained to want to hear you, you only do hit that. Old, old school West Coast gangster ass shit, right? Mm-hmm. And you know my problem is too though is that I need to learn how to network with other people and step out of my comfort zone as far because as you know I've been doing this all by myself. Mm-hmm. So it, I don't have no I don't really have features on my songs and shit. Everything is just pure me. And the reason I, I, I roll like that though bro is the fact that Every time I, if I do try to do a feature, it's going to slow me down. Mm. The reason I say it's going to slow me down because then I got to wait on everything. You wait till you're ready. Wait till uh, you ready to shoot the video. You know what I'm saying? Wait till all that. Man, fuck all that. Mm. I'd rather just do it myself. And the only person I'm waiting on is me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, but I've been trying to step out my comfort zone and get other artists so I can grab their their fan base too you feel me bring right. it over to me that's why i've been doing like different music like like the, the uh the r&b type of stuff mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying i got a song called it's a lot of mac and that's supposed to be dropping i'm doing a video sunday but that one is dope it ain't no r&b shit but mm. that one's hard you know because it's funny like a lot of street rappers out of la at some point kind of pivot into making some booty shaking records yeah. too because they realize that that's going to hit a totally different audience that they don't normally hit. Club. Yeah. Partying. Everybody want to party. Everybody want to, you know, that, and I don't make club music. Mm. I got club music. You know what I'm saying? Some of my shit is club music, but I make, I mainly make shit for the streets, but that shit don't really, it gets you far. You know what I'm saying? Like people, people outside the U.S. really love that California West Coast music like mm-hmm. I could go I probably could throw a big ass you feel me function out there but it's just like I'm pretty everybody like you uh West Coast music in the US too but I don't know they be thinking I just supposed to make club music all the time because it's just not me but I'm I'm getting to that point I got shit like that right you know what I'm saying like like last night my friend Kareem is staying with me from Texas and so we just sit down on the couch once I get back from doing interviews all day and I'm like oh yeah I gotta I gotta watch some shit I gotta get ready for this interview tomorrow and I start putting on your videos and I'm like looking at him and just realizing that from his Texas standpoint I don't think he like had seen your shit before and he's kind of like realizing like oh shit like there's West Coast rappers that are actually still keeping it really like true to what mm-hmm. this shit has been, mm-hmm. uh, and I was just like, that's kind of crazy, like seeing it from his outsider perspective because he probably didn't even know that there was like somebody like you really staying committed to that. But do you like, is that just you, or is that kind of just how you got used to making music and stuff? Like, I don't know. Like, what's your perspective on it's stepping both. outside that box? It's both. It's, it's really me because that's what I grew up on. And to be honest, if you it, a lot of niggas didn't start getting back on that West Coast. Music until I started bringing that shit back a long mm. time ago. Now I'm starting to see, I ain't gonna say no name, but I'm starting to see a lot of niggas do it too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of y'all wasn't fucking with it because y'all thought it wasn't gonna get nowhere. Right. And that's why I always told myself I like to be the only nigga doing shit or the only nigga that take a risk because when you scared and I'm not, nigga, that means that I'm gonna be the nigga that take that step forward. You feel me? And then I'm gonna see what, what it's like. You know what I'm saying? So, but. It always been me, like, making West Coast music. I've been doing that shit since I was, what, 12? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Rapping. Uh, my, my biggest, uh, my favorite artist was Tupac. Mm-hmm. And I used to uh, I used to love the Bone Thugs and all type of shit. So I got a lot of West Coast in me from from uh, the legends that was before me. Mm-hmm. So it was, it's in me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, I mean, when you really look at, like, who's popped off out of California over the last, like, five, ten years or whatever, like, a lot of the artists who've blown up have had kind of, like, a distinctly not old-school West Coast style. Like, Draco the Ruler kind of, like, went a totally different direction. You look at the EBK boys out Mm -hmm. of Stockton, they went in a totally different direction. You look at somebody who's, like, huge on a mainstream level, like Roddy Rich, his shit does not sound super West Coast. Right. So it kind of... If anything, it kind of like opens up a lane for you to potentially be able to like resonate with people who exactly. kind of miss that sound. That's the point. That's what I'm saying. Mm. When I take that risk, if you scared and I'm not, you feel me? I'm going to be the only one being looked at. Mm. So that's why I always be the nigga to take the risk, period. And I feel like me personally, like even where like I feel like like the North, them niggas got this shit on lock like a motherfucker. 
bro. Mm-hmm. Like they they shit is really cracking up there now that you mentioned like EBK and all them niggas. Them mm-hmm. niggas is really cracking. I feel like like in Southern, a lot of niggas try to st- sound like Drake. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Everybody yeah. trying to sound like this nigga. Everybody making the same shit. Cause like it's only one. Cause he he. I mean he paved the way. But and the distinctive thing about Draco and a lot of those dudes is that I mean Draco did have hooks and shit, but like a lot of that shit is kind of monotone, especially like people who are kind of like doing his style. It's kind of monotone, no hooks. It's like the number one shit that might appeal to fans on like a hardcore hip hop level, but realistically is not gonna like really be able to step outside that box. Outside the box, because there was only one dude that could do that shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's, it's to the point where everybody's doing it. Mm. It ain't like Draco, then somebody else, and then, okay, cool, you sound like Draco, okay, but I'm still gonna f- with you. Now it's like you, 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 him, him, him. They all trying to sound like cuss, so mm. it makes it makes it a repetitive and like, okay, I'm getting tired of you mm. type shit. You feel me? So, But one thing that I like when I'm like observing what you've been up to for the last few years and shit is just that it feels like it it's not outside the realm of possibility for you to really take risks if your heart is in it. Like mm-hmm. seeing you make that song about your daughter, daddy's little girl. Mm-hmm. I got a three-year-old daughter. So that, that kind of meant a lot to me seeing that because you know that some people are going to automatically perceive you as corny or whatever for mm-hmm. talking about something serious in your music like that. But I, I mean, as a parent, this is the most important thing in your life. Right. And, and why, why do rappers avoid making songs about the things that are the most meaningful to them? Hey, that's them. I love my baby. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I want her to be able to know that be, behind all the gangster shit I uh, made and all this shit that, I always that if something happened to me, she could always go back to that song and remember like, oh, daddy made this for me. That's exactly what I was saying. I'm like, he made this song in case he dies young. Like he made this so that she would have a blueprint so to, to, to go do. back to. You feel me? And then not only that, I know it's fathers out there that can relate to what I'm saying. Mm. Like you said, you have a daughter. So it's a lot of shit that people could re- relate to. Because when, when when men and when fathers and, and daughters, y'all already know that's like, if you a real daddy, that's like your world. Mm. You feel me? Like we the protector. So that was my goal. Like, I mean, I love my daughter with all my heart. I really die for her. I, right now I'm living for it. Mm. But. If it came down to it, then I'll die for my baby. No, you know what I'm saying? No questions asked. But I just wanted that. I wanted to, like, because she, she's a big fan of me. My baby mm-hmm. is my number one fan. Like, she's the biggest supporter. So I know I got a lot of shit to out when, it, when I'm too explicit. So I know that if I made that for her, now she have something positive to listen to because she be singing my songs. I even put her on, uh, I put her on that song, yeah. Daddy Little Girl, but I even did another song with her. Mm. You feel me about uh, blacks killing blacks and trying to stop that shit. You know, just speak it positive because I'm not going to put her on no gangster shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I, that's just the type of nigga I am. I don't listen to what, I don't go based off of what the world think of me or or how they feel I should move. Mm. You feel me? Because I'm my own man. But in terms of exposing her to the gangster shit and everything, like, where do you draw the line? Because it's like, maybe there's a barbecue, you want to go to a picnic or some shit, and it's all your homies. Like, I don't do that. That's a little too much. I you don't, don't do want that. You don't ask anybody. You can ask the homie, because do I ever bring the baby to the hood? On the set, I don't like there be times when, my, when some of the big homegirls they'll tell me like, "Oh, we throwing a party. You should bring your daughter." Nah, mm. because you don't know what we from. We from where we from, so anything can happen anytime, bro. Like I don't care. If we on, we might be on some good shit, or we having a party, woo woo. But other niggas ain't thinking like that. Mm. You feel me? They think this is the time to do shit. They don't give a f- who out there. It ain't like how it was back in the day where kids matter. And if you with your grandma or your your mom or whatever, we gonna let you get a pass. Mm. You feel me? It ain't like that no more. Niggas is doing shit when you with your your daughter, bro. Like don't give a. F- so I don't put my my daughter around no game banging mm. at all. She not she. I rather man on on my mama. Cause I rather my baby going to being on a white neighborhood, bro. With nothing. I don't care. But she won't grow up in the ghetto, bro. I'm telling you that because I already know how I feel. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I've been there. So it, it's if to me, I feel like this is my it's important for me to keep that shit away from her because then she gonna take the same steps or then she gonna she gonna look at that lifestyle like it's c- cool even though you know yeah because even if your kid is like four or five years old she can't help but sort of take in some of those influences mm-hmm. and think that this shit is dope even if it's you know and and it, it's like if you have uh, like I feel like a lot of people kind of want to bring their kids around that type of shit in a self-serving way because they want to bring their kid to the environment 
in which they are the most beloved. Mm -hmm. Like somebody suggested, like, why didn't you bring your kid to Rolling Loud? I'm like, what the fuck do I have to gain of bringing my kid to Rolling Loud? I'm going to take her ass to Disneyland. Thank you. That's for her. Right. The only benefit to me bringing her to Rolling Loud is that she's going to get to see a bunch of people who treat yes. me like I'm something special. And I don't really give a fuck about exposing her to that. Yeah, but it's like, you got to think of the, the shit that come with it from you bringing her around that shit. You feel me? So, like, that was, that was low-key how... My dad used to bring me around that shit. Mm. You feel me? So that it was something like, okay, I love this. Like, mm. you feel me? So it's it's different, bro. Like, but me personally, as a girl, I would never ever. I just feel like it's di when you have daughters, bro. It's a different type of protection you got to put on them because we know even like with the men and what happens with rape, all this shit that come with her being a girl. I know all this shit, so I'm like. And I'm gonna keep her away from everything. You say that in the song is that you know that you're basically like creating a blueprint for what kind of guy she's gonna want to be with in the future and what kind of uh, treatment she's gonna expect from a guy exactly. in the future. So like every single image that you give her of what a man is when they're really young is like unbelievably important. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the chicks who are walking on the blade nine times out of ten, they those are no girls who had up relationships yeah. with their dad exactly and my baby have a perfect relationship i don't care if me and my bm ain't ain't on the same page i stay in my daughter's life you know what i'm saying because at the end of the day the father is the first man they look up to mm -hmm. you feel me so they if they go out look, looking for a dude they're gonna look for an image of their father right mm -hmm. so it's, it's important that you put, I put those things into her of what to expect, what comes with this, or what do, like, you know what I'm saying? What, you know what I'm saying? Like, just simple shit like that. And then after that, whatever decision she making on her, mm. you feel me? So. 100%. So, you you don't stay in San Bernardino anymore? Hell no, bro. I'll I be there, I'll go there, but. Right. Living there, fuck no. No. I'm, I'm not making it too easy for niggas, because on the set, mm. not doing it. Because you're kind of like the trophy out of that area, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I'm not making it easy for niggas. <laughs> and, say but is that ever, like, a hard decision? Because you just have so much love for the city that raised you? Man, it's not that it's a hard decision. It's that when you, when you see outside of that shit, you want outside of that shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So for me living in different places, bro, it made me— And then every time I come back to San Bernardino, bro, the energy— you on the set, you feel the energy, bro. Any real nigga that live in, the, in San Bernardino or, or left and it came back, you feel the energy. You mm -hmm. feel the negativity. As soon as you hit that motherfucker, like, oh, yep. You, I remember. You feel the lack of opportunity everything. in the air. You feel everything, <laughs> bro. You feel the bad. You feel, I, that's just me. I'm pretty sure other niggas feel that. But mm -hmm. me personally, I feel the energy, bro. Like my uncle used to tell me, because better that you come to the bullshit than live in the bullshit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because when you live in the bullshit, bullshit comes at your front door. Right. You feel me? So it's like, nah, I'm not making it easy for niggas and they can feel what they feel. Cause I still come to San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. But living there, nah. Mm -mm. I realized how grimy it was when uh, King Yellow was talking about how he got shot, his car shot up by some random Mexicans <laughs> he didn't even know when he went there. Why are y'all laughing? Y'all did it? <laughs> that was y'all? <laughs> nah, they. I mean, that's. I tell you right there, niggas ain't playing out there. Cause right. you no know, niggas playing. I just can't. It's really. I I could live there, but I can't. I got a baby to raise. Cause mm. and with that, when that shit happened a while ago, it was too close to home for her. Mm. So I was like, mm, I looked at this shit totally different. Like, cause I can't. No. Uh. Uh. Nah. If, if I'm not never lo losing that over. She's my. I have. She look up to me, bro. So I have to protect her. So for me to put that shit on her and bring my bullshit to her, nah, never. Right. Never. What, never. Do, you, what do you have to gain from it? I don't gain shit. You could take her to the the nice grocery store or take her yeah, to the, I'll the take playground. Her to you know? Albertsons or some shit. Yeah, yeah. I take her outside this shit. But I would never. I'm. I'm telling you when I'm saying I'm overprotected on my baby. Cause I really am very, very overprotected of my daughter. Mm. And I'm. And I stand twenty feet on that. Cause on the set, I'm not. I should feel like every man should feel like that about their kid, bro. You mm. know what I'm saying? So, I just can't do it, man. I mean, it's it's extra important because realistically, a lot of people in rap do not verbalize that shit or express that shit or they think that they're too cool or they are too in love with the lifestyle and the partying and the, the clubbing or whatever to really like be there for their kids consistently like there's a lot of great men in rap that if you really look at it their relationships with their kids 
seem like they probably uh, could be better. Yeah. But as a parent, period, yo, you ain't never at your best. You feel me? As a parent, you, you're, you're never at your best. There's always room for improvement. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, And that's how I take it. Like, there's never a time where I'm the greatest fucking daddy ever in the world. To her, probably, but it's always going to be imp- improvement for that. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't just stop at a, okay, yeah, I've been doing this, so I'm going to stay right here. No, it's gonna all, you're going to always have to do better. Always, always, every time. It's mm. always in, it's time for improvement, bro. You can't never be at your best when it comes to parenting. There's be times where I'm not the best father. You know, there's times where I'll be slacking and I get into it with my BM over this shit or just anything, bro. And 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 if and if it's and if it's if it's in my heart and I know it, then it's something I gotta work on. Right. You know what I'm saying? So No, nah, definitely. Um, okay, but what like what is the actual day to day life like for you? Like I see you working on music a lot and putting a lot of music out and stuff, but I I, I for some reason I have a hard time imagining like what the the Tuesday afternoon and the life of the doggy style is like? Shit, it depends, bro. Like, my life is, I ain't gonna say it's fun. My, my life is normal, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, but there's some places I can and can't go. You know what I'm saying? Which, that shit is kind of, kind of annoying. But, I mean, I can go anywhere I please. But if I'm trying to be a smart nigga, you know, there's some places that I don't want to go. Um, but it's, it's, it's just normal, bro. Like, all I do, write music, low ride, um, shit, play games, nigga, and, and and shoot videos and try to network. That's it. Cause I'm I'm not I ain't got time to be having fun. Cause like man, it's not I ain't got time. I can do that later on in life. Mm. You feel me? Or I'm trying to. Or that's what I want to do is work. Right. You feel me? So definitely. No, I respect it. How, okay, you said that you didn't you don't do a lot of collabs or whatever, but I saw that you finally did the the Snoop Dogg collab. How did that actually come about? Um, okay, like, shit, like, two years ago, I think it was, two years ago, I had did a show in L.A. at Night of a Blaskin, and after that show, I went to Vegas, and when I was in Vegas, I was already tired, because we didn't leave the show until, like, 11, 12, and after we left, we went straight to Vegas, so we didn't get to Vegas probably, like, until 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning, and the homie was on my, uh, on my phone, on the, uh, my live and uh, as he gets on my life, the uh, I'm knocked the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? He wakes me up like, "Hey, cuz Snoop just tapped in." Woo woo. I'm like, "What?" I'm dazed the fuck. Like, what you mean he tapped in? So he he uh, he showed me, and Snoop had texted me like, "Hey, uh, tell cuz to wake up or some shit." He ain't never some some, some shit shit. He, he said you can't never get money out of going to sleep type shit. Mm-hmm. So. Me and him, I hopped up like, okay. So he like, hey, come, come. I'm, I'm in Texas. I'm getting this bag real quick, but when I come back, I'm gonna chop it up with you. Woo woo. I'm like, okay, for sure. So months went by. You know what I'm saying? He was reaching out here and there, here and there, reaching out, reaching out. Um, and then like, you know, I don't like to be thirsty on that shit. I still do me. So mm-hmm. you know, when you're ready, you ready. Cause I'm not about to force you. So I kept doing me, and um, he was tapping in and shit. And then he calls me. He, he calls me and he was uh, telling me like, uh, like he f- with what I'm doing. He's like, nigga, you making too much noise, nigga. Like you making hella noise, nigga. I f- with what you doing? You know what I'm saying? Um, he's like, man, I'm glad that you ain't got no beef on you, nigga. You ain't beef with none of these rap niggas. You just in your own lane. You doing this and that, and that's why I f- with. Da da da. He tell me all this type of shit. He's like, man, I got this. Uh, first he was trying to get me on Def Jam. Mm. Uh, when he was on that, when he's uh, the uh, you remember he had Def Jam West, right? He was trying to get me on that, and then uh, he ended up getting a Death Row shit. Mm. When he got the Death Row shit, that's when he called me and told me all that shit. He's like, man, you know, I do, I'm uh, I'm getting this Death Row. He's like, I want to sign you. He's like, but either you could be on the side of me, you could roll with me, or you could do, be doing your own shit. You know what I'm saying? He's like, but I'm just fucking with you. He's like, niggas looking at you like the little Snoop and you know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know. who and then he's like, I'm gonna tap in with you in a few days. And in a few days, he tapped back with me and shit like that. And then everything just, we just, I just left it alone. You know what I'm saying? And after that, uh, I hit him up. No, I, uh, after that, I had, uh, me and Ace had a uh, song that we did. And as I'm doing it, like, I got a feel for music. I got a big feel for music. So as I'm doing the song, I'm like, cuz, nigga, I said, nigga, I hear somebody, I need a feature on this, bro. I don't wanna just put this song out. And I'll get a feature. And he's like, yeah, he's like, who you hear on there? I'm like, nigga, I'm hearing like Snoop, cuz, like, I'm hearing cuz on this. And this would be cold if we put this nigga on it. 
He's like, you feeling that? I'm like, yeah, cuz. He's like, man, try it. So I tapped in with Snoop. I'm like, man, let me know if you're hearing this. And he like, uh, he like, yeah. F- no, I, I made a, a post. And then after that, I tapped in with cuz. And I was like, nigga, he's like, man, I want you on this. Can you, you want to hop on this? That nigga was excited. He's like, nigga, I f- with that. Woo, woo. You know what I'm saying? He's like, nigga, send it through. Put in his email. He's like, I'll get at you in the next few days. And nigga sent it back in like four days. Mm-hmm. And... After that, I asked him, like, man, can we shoot a video for the summer, woo woo? He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm on tour, but when I get back, no. He's like, you can either do it before I go to tour or when I'm on tour. I'm like, I mean, after I get back, like, let's do it before you go on tour, because I don't know, I don't want to fuck up this momentum. You mm-hmm. feel me? So we heard we shot the video, and that was that, bro. What was it like, like, in terms of being around somebody who's that unbelievably successful, famous, rich, et cetera, yeah. and like, realistically, has basically accomplished everything that every rapper that I'll, I ever interview wants to do times 10 for yeah. the most part? Like, what was it like being around that, that energy? It was cool energy. He treated me like, man, that nigga showed, like, I don't know if people say a lot of things about Snoop, but, I mean, unless he put on the front, I feel like cuz is a genuine nigga. Mm. You feel me? When I met him, that nigga was showing nothing but love. He he showed love to my baby girl. He was just, you know what I'm saying? And to me, it felt good. But I'm never, I'm never been a type of nigga that be like starstruck or like writing niggas. I don't do that shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, he he was just, it was just cool to meet him because number one, it nipped all that bullshit in the bud. Mm. You feel me? All that Snoop, you trying to you trying to do this, you trying to do that. Cause I don't want to hear that. Nigga, if the nigga reached out to me, cause you ain't got nothing to say. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it felt good that then, especially me being from San Bernardino, bro, and me pushing my own line independently, like no label, no nothing, no manager, no nothing. I'm pushing my own line. I get a feature by one of the biggest artists from the West Coast. Mm. That tell me right there, bro, like, it was something crazy, and that's what uh, Half Dead was saying. He's like, man, Snoop don't really fuck with a lot of niggas. He's like, man, you was making a lot of noise in here. Nigga, he's like, that's all we was hearing. He's mm-hmm. like, he had no choice but to come to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? It was just, man, bro, it was, it, was a, it was a great feeling. Definitely. I mean, if you think about how long Snoop has been around and how it feels like he has the respect of pretty much everybody and has ha- has not really like had like almost any significant real beef so right. the years. I don't know if I ever interviewed somebody who was just like, yeah, Snoop's a kid. Yeah, he's it's like cool. unthinkable. Like he's just, he really seems like everybody meets him and he lives up to what they yeah. want him to be. Yeah, the nigga ain't, that's what I'm saying. He, I don't know, cause he, I, I, I like the, the vibe he gave me. You know what I'm saying? He gave me a great vibe. It wasn't no, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, we even stayed till like nine o'clock at night, bro. Cause the, my, uh, my uncle, his foe had broke down and Snoop was like, cause y'all can stay out long as y'all want. Woo mm-hmm. woo. And we ended up fixing and got up out of there. The nigga's a genuine nigga, bro. Like, you feel me? It, it, it was, everything was genuine. I'm hoping that it was genuine, but mm-hmm. I feel like it was, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. But. It was a good feeling. So what was the conversation like about you signing to Death Row or whatever? Or how did you get past that Def Jam conversation? I don't know. I think, I don't know. He just, I think because he left it. Mm. He ended up getting a Death Row shit. Okay, right. That's when they used to, I guess they, I don't know what went on behind closed door. I don't know if he bought it out or whatever the case may be, or he had something going on with them. And that's when he was like, well, I'm going to sign you a Death Row. And that's what he was saying when I shot the video too. Like, he like, uh, he like I'm a, when, I'm, when I'm ready, I'm going to present it to you. That type of shit. Like, to everybody that's out there, bro, I'm not signed to nobody. Cause on the set, I know everybody be asking now, are you signed to Snoop? I thought you were signed to Snoop. Mm. Nah, I ain't signed to nobody cause I'm independent. You know what I'm saying? Snoop was just a nigga that looked out for me. You feel me? And he f- what I, I, I'm doing. You feel me? He had, mm. he had my back a lot, so. Do you think that independent is just ultimately better for you? Or do you, do you feel like you're still open to the, the right possible no, situation? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you cause this shit is hard. Mm. Independent is very, very hard because everything comes out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And then I'm making mistakes because if I'm not, I'm learning the game as I go. If I ain't got niggas in my ear trying to tell me, or I ain't got a manager or anybody in my ear trying to tell me, hey, this is what you should do. Let me let me show you this. I'm making mistakes as a motherfucker as I'm going. I'm losing money behind it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I, I, I made it my life. So I, everything I do, I have to do it this way because this is my this is how I get paid. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I invest all my money into whatever it takes for my music to get out. You know what I'm saying? And I'm still got to pay shit on my lifestyle. Like, you feel me? Like, it's, it's a lot of shit that I do behind this shit. Being independent is hard, bro. Like, 
when I say independent, some niggas be independent but be signed to a distribution and mm-hmm. all type of shit and or have niggas behind them, you know what I'm saying? Like a big ass company like like Empire, they still be independent. I'm it wasn't never like that for me. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So yeah. But have you even had those conversations with someplace like like Empire that could potentially I like did. take care of a lot of the behind the scenes stuff? I did have um uh Empire was trying to sign me a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, like I said, I didn't understand the game, bro. Mm-hmm. Like I was denying everybody, cause like <laughs> I was denying everybody, bro. And like, I had, I didn't got hit up by, uh, but then I started being opening up to everybody too. I didn't got hit up by uh, Ryan W. Melly, his manager. Oh, yeah. I didn't got hit up by uh, so many niggas, bro. Some nigga named Marcus Black. I forgot who that is. I ain't hit. Up, I got hit up by him. I got hit up by uh, 300 Entertainment. Columbia, yep. I was actually sat down with them. I got hit up by Alamo. I sat down with them. They was trying to sign me like a motherfucker. Really? On my mama, they was trying to get me, and they was so it was. They wanted me so bad, bro. They came and flew to my house really? <laughs> after I went to go visit them. They came back and flew to my house. That's before I got shot. They flew to my house, and I told them like, "Cut! You think this is why I gotta make the right decisions?" Because he started seeing how ghetto I was living, how mm-hmm. ghetto it was all over there. I was like, now you see why I got to make the right decision. He like, yeah, man. He like, yeah, it is kind of crazy out here. And yeah, I got signed. I was getting uh, hit up by, uh, oh, yeah, Say Cheese wanted to sign me. Oh, really? They flew me out. Oh, that's when you did the interview when early When I did on. the interview, right, okay. yeah. They, they, he was trying. I was trying to, they, but it's like it gets to the point where you have to hop on something or don't hop on nothing mm. because then it starts slowing down if niggas don't believe in you. It's just crazy though because like even this morning I was looking at Twitter and I seen uh, Othri Greedo who was signed who was signed to Alamo or still signed to Alamo like he's frustrated like he's you know he's been signed for a long time he doesn't feel like he gets what he needs out of the label he doesn't feel like he gets the support or mm-hmm. uh, like he's he's not getting the full amount of money to for himself or whatever so he's not necessarily motivated to drop music so it's like it could always go one way or another like 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 for every label that you just named off there's big success stories but then there's also people that just kind of exactly. got trapped because a lot of times like the dude who pulled up to your house to try to sign you realistically the incentives that made him do that is the fact that if he signs you that's a w for him at that label mm-hmm. now what happens to you over the course of the next two three years it don't matter doesn't really affect him yeah. like that because he's just being uh being looked at as the guy who's signing yeah. people realistically and yeah. so it creates this like f-ed up thing in the industry where people will go so hard trying to sign the hot new talent but have almost no room in their brain to think about how to make them hot on project number three yeah, or year number hot. three, you yeah, know? Yeah, you don't got to make them stay hot, too. That's what I'm saying. When you, and it's, it's bad because even when you sign to big labels, you got to think of all the, the great artists they have on that label already. They're mm-hmm. they going to look at you and not even push you. Right. You feel that's another thing that's bad about signing to labels, bro. Like, they will not push you if they already pushing, if they already got a hot number one on their shit. Mm-hmm. They just sign you just to shelf you. And that's what I was scared of, too. I ain't getting shelf because, like, I want to be able to put out music when I want to put out music. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So, mm. definitely. Um, okay. I was I was checking out the, the video that you did with uh, that guy, Crook One. Oh, yeah, Crook One, yeah. What's your relationship with him? Is that a real friendship? That's my boy. I f with Crook One. Okay. It ain't like a, a super duper friendship. Like we I, I f with him. You feel me? It, you guys just seem like kinda kindred souls there because he seems like he's got real appreciation for the older school shit. Mm-hmm. And like there's a there's a similar aesthetic and it's interesting from a black dude and a Mexican dude who kinda align on the appreciation mm-hmm. of a certain like slowed down style of West Coast rap, Hell right? Yeah. I, f- I mean I f with everybody, bro. I don't give a f- what color you is. That shit don't work with me because I f- with anybody. Mm. I love Mexicans because, number one, they my biggest supporters. So, it, to me, I feel like I have to step out that zone. And I, I be getting criticized by people like, because f- with them. Like, so what? Cause, like, nigga, and the f- you mean? Nigga, like, nigga, these is, it's not about that. Because y'all make this shit about a skin color so f- much. Mm. Like, bro, it's, it's about chemistry. You know is, is that is the black Mexican thing a big deal in San Bernardino? Yeah, no, not no, it's really. Not. Okay. Nah, not really. Not like that, like Long Beach and out here. Nah, not mm-hmm. really. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's not like all that shit. We really get, we really f- with the Mexicans out there. You feel me? So right, it's not. It's never been like like how it is out here. Like bro, like y'all be it be crazy out here. They really hate niggas out here. Right? <laughs> a lot of times mm-hmm. with that stuff, I hear it like past tense, as in shit is kind of cool right now, but there's 
definitely been times in the past where that shit was really intense. Yeah, I didn't went to, I didn't, I didn't bend out here with a Mexican homie from the hood, and the Mexican was, was mad at that because he was a Mexican crip. Mm. Like, bro, there's, there's a, it's a lot of I'm shit. Don't they don't, bro, on the set. So it's like, I don't know, bro. It's, I, I don't look at it like that, and I don't see how niggas could be racist. Where the that's like some jealousy, hate shit. Like, you got to really hate a nigga. Like, you have to have it in your heart to hate a nigga because of what he look like. Uh, that's the, but that's I hear I hear from people about once you go to prison or once you go to jail or whatever, that that shit, like, infects people's brains. Yeah. And you'll, you'll forever talk to somebody who was not racist on the streets, gets locked up for 10 years, becomes a full-blown racist, going to war with motherfuckers. Of mm -hmm. a race, and then they get out and basically just kind of have to kick it with the niggas unlearn again. it real quick. Yeah, yep. my brother has a nigga that did that shit to him, talking that racist shit when he was in jail. He was saying that shit too, and I was at the house, and that nigga confronted the nigga. I'm like, what? What is you doing, bro? He's like, nigga, fuck that. Cause this nigga was being racist in the pen. I mean, in jail, nigga. Woo -woo. He's on him on the streets, mm. and dude didn't want no smoke. I tell you right there, like, cause like nigga, if it's not in you, if it's not real, stop running with it, bro. Like, cause like y'all make these damn. Man, cause I I don't know I just stay out of a lot of shit. As right. you see, I stay out of a lot of shit. Who do, who do you see me beefing with? Nobody, cause unless right. they beefing with me, you feel me on their own shit. No, I have actually searched doggy style beef on YouTube. It's pretty dry. No beef, no beef, bro. You avoid it. No beef. I avoid that shit. Unless it's from the hood shit. That's different. But as far as like industry shit, no beef, bro. Right. Because unless it's the weirdo nigga, cuz, cuz the weirdo, f cuz, but, <laughs> cuz, this is cuz, but. Snoopy badass. Yeah. I asked him, uh, I said, do you f with Dice Out because we were talking about him being signed to Death Row or whatever at one point, and he pretended that he didn't know who you were. I've seen that shit. And then he said, oh, I can't beef with somebody who's got two, uh, two earrings in their nose. Yeah, right here. Niggas gonna fight me then. <laughs> <laughs> Get beat up by a nigga with two earrings. Did you even spend time around him, or is man? I don't even know this nigga, bro. He was a he was a groupie on Cud. Man, Cud was a groupie, nigga. When I first met Cud, and I didn't meet him in person, I met him because he tapped in with me, and he kept. It's funny because when he inboxed me, he started. That's how I knew that he was going through it with his own hood because he started saying like, "Bro, you know, if you make it, you're gonna have a lot of haters." He started telling me basically his life stories, <laughs> right? Yeah, in yeah. a subliminal way, like, "Cuz nigga, shut up, cuz like nigga, you got so much smut on your name, nigga, like nigga, like cuz." And then you, like, bro, you do not want to smoke, nigga. I'm telling you that now, bro. Like, instead of running your mouth, cuz line it up. Mm. I, I'll tell you if I see cuz ain't no I'm nigga, well, let me shut up but I'm telling you ain't none of that cuz nigga you diss my mama and you diss the hood nigga like oh, cuz you can't even, you won't even come to the hood and say that though like bro like niggas be doing uh, nigga yeah he diss the say nigga come on cuz I didn't got calls by the homie cuz like cuz you hear what I didn't even know the nigga blocked me while he was talking his shit cuz was talking all that gangster shit while having me, while having me blocked <laughs> <laughs> like cuz you was a weirdo on the set, you was a weirdo, bro. But I left that shit alone because I ain't gonna never see you. Mm. You know I ain't gonna never see you. That's why you you running your mouth like this, bro. You right. in the Himalaya somewhere. I f with him, but then it feels like every time I interview him, there's like some sort of explosion in his life where like whatever questions I ask him, it causes insane drama as a result of it. He blackballed himself, cause mm. he blackballed himself because you you steady beefing with niggas, bro. Hey, you're beefing with niggas for no reason, bro. Like, and that's and it started over me not wanting to be do a uh, what he wanted to do the verses, but he wanted he wanted to exclude everything out here, cause like nigga, why is you excluding what we represent? What you scared that you got so much smut that it's gonna affect you, nigga? Like, come on, cause like nigga, I ain't wait, everything out here like no West Coast music. He said we could do a verses, but let's exclude I E and L A. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I in L.A., nigga, I'm from San Bernardino. Why I can't, what the f***? And then I'm like, all right, for sure. And then he came back like, nah, f let's exclude the whole California. Whole California, I'm good. How the f*** you excluding what we represent? Nigga, what you scared? Oh, they biased. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he cuz said, bro. He got he, he got and then he got butt hurt because the niggas was sending me shit about him being from over there in Moreno Valley. Mm -hmm. And then I, I said, nigga, the, the I told I said, nigga, I posted like, nigga, the, it's off. The, like the verses is off, and they like why, why, why? I'm like, cause niggas is bad. Mm. You feel me? Like nigga, I ain't. Why am I sitting there trying to? You call yourself the king of Compton, cousin? You ain't even from there, nigga. 
How you the king of Compton? You ain't even accomplished enough. Mm. The fuck is you talking about, nigga? You, you, you ain't even the king of Moreno Valley. Nigga, you was a whole Captain America, nigga, <laughs> on the set. So that's why, like, nigga, because, like, nigga, you, you, that's why I was like, nigga, you can't, you can't say you from L.A., bro, and then you want me to, nigga, we basically, our artists is going against each other, cuz, like, let's be real, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, on the set, we, our artists is going against each other, nigga. Right. I left, I left, yeah, I left cuz alone. You can't, you ain't from L.A., nigga. His homie cut on the set, his big homie from his hood tapped in with me, was calling that nigga a mark, like, cuz, that nigga, 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 cause I guess his, I, be, I guess his big homie ran with some of my big homies back in the day. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, man, I used to pull up with Whoop De Whoop. You know, he named the homie and shit. And um, he like, man, fuck Snoop, stupid badass, cause ain't from the set. Woo woo, woo. he's bad mouth for him. One of it's, 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 a, it's one of his big homies. They the one they man, cause let me shut up. But yeah, fuck cause. Do you think if I if I had a beat and you guys both rapped on it, I gassed the shit out of that nigga. You think on the set I gassed him. You better do some research on my music, bro. Damn. On the set I gassed him. I feel like he's a pretty good rapper too. I feel like it would man, be a good that competition. It's a illiterate rapper, bro. <laughs> look at what he look at how he rap, bro. He rap like a like. How in the 80s, cuz like niggas, where there was no bars behind it, cuz you rap like a fucking 80s rapper, cuz like it wasn't no fucking bars or nothing behind your shit. Cause. But so you wouldn't get on a song on the same beat, like we could not put that as a song. You don't want your name in the same YouTube I title as him? I, no, no, f no, because mm. nigga, you get clout off of me. Mm. I don't want my name attached to none of this nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's already done with. Nigga, this nigga already blackballed himself. Nigga, you got like a thousand listeners, two probably two hundred listeners, cause you um, you blackballed the fuck out of yourself because you want to beef with everybody, mm. and then you beefing with niggas that will really like they can really do that shit to you, cause like niggas, that's why I don't beef with nobody, bro. Mm. I try to stay in my own lane. If niggas don't like me, it's because it's, they don't like me, cause of, they don't like themselves, because I don't I don't put out that energy to make you not like me, cause mm. you feel me? Any nigga that met me in person. Love me. They see how genuine. Nigga, I take pictures with everybody. I'm, I kick it like, nigga, I'm not acting like I'm a bougie nigga. I kick it. Now, now ask anybody that really function with a nigga. I don't, I don't sit there and act like I'm better than anybody. Mm. You feel me? So, but if shit happens, could it happen. Yeah, I mean, Snoopy, like, I f*** with him, but I also do feel like he just has a tendency to, like, up his relationships with people just by being a little too hot headed. Like if I was more sensitive, for sure our relationship would have ended a long time ago because every once in a while he'll just be tripping out on me on his story or yeah, something. Yeah, he, he's gonna get mad, he's gonna get emotional. Yeah. Nigga, that nigga got baby mama feelings, bro. You're gonna get emotional, and that's what every day, bro, I swear to God, my mama rest in peace. Every fucking day I woke up, it was another post about me. <laughs> every day like cuz like nigga get out your feelings bro you acting like a bm nigga mm. like nigga every day every day then the homies calling me like cuz you see what this nigga posted well, i mean i don't give a f what cuz post let him post he got me blocked now mm. let him post y'all his nigga ain't nobody nigga you ain't i'm not gonna respond because mm. then you start then nigga start you feel me i'm mad that i'm even responding now like, cause, <laughs> like, like a, a formal statement just to let people yeah, know how you feel know, about like, it yeah. like I, ne I never really addressed that shit because i let niggas run their mouth on the internet bro i don't sit there and address everything there's some things i have to address but a lot of shit i don't address because i don't care about it because i'm i'm on i'm on focus on me i'm tunnel vision bro like mm. i don't i had the drama in the streets still got drama in the streets when I'm bringing, when I'm in the rap game, bro, I'm trying to build different shit. Like I'm trying to get the homies on. I'm trying to get my family on. I'm trying to fuck all what you other niggas are doing, cuz on the set. Fuck y'all. You feel me? So. Cause like, if you were to be all kind of going back and forth, making songs with them and shit, it's it's just like it's only really going to appeal to people who already know about you slash know about him. It's not going to like take your shit to okay. another level. It's not like you know realistically, if if you or him got dissed by a Roddy Rich or like a big rapper like that then it's get smoked now we're talking yeah it's like you can really benefit then a lot I from did, people with somebody like that cut you know? back. yeah but i'm not benefiting off of that bro yeah you know what i'm saying like nigga, it's no it's no benefit mm. but if it was like you said hell yeah i'm dissing all them niggas if it was that type of shit if it was niggas dissing me and i'm like okay i'm only gonna diss you because i want your fans mm. and i want to do you know but i never been a clout chaser but shit for that i do i give the fans what they want but not this nigga no because you ain't nobody Right, yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of YouTubers are similar to that too, where they're beefing with 
other YouTubers who are like the exact same size as them, and it doesn't really actually help them that much. Yeah. But you're not into the social media shit in general all that much in terms of like just you, you know, making videos about people or like, do you rather, if you do have something to say to somebody, you'd probably, you'd rather embedded in the music than make it about something you're saying on your Instagram Sometimes story? Sometimes I do that. A lot of times I do that because I'm like, I'm going to eat off of you. Mm. Since you want to talk and put in my music, eat off of you. <laughs> shit, nigga, why not? Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how I do it. Or, nigga, if you want to meet up, get down, fight, whatever, that's different too. Mm. But I'm not about to go back and forth with no nigga on the internet, bro. Like, come on, dude, that's stupid, bro. Like, come on, you're leaving traces for one, nigga. And then, now everybody know we beefing, and then all this, and something happened to you, nigga. It's going to fall on me. Something happened to me. It's going to fall. Like, come uh, man, shut up, nigga. Just leave it alone. Yeah. I, I think keeping in the music is is a really great approach because especially like you look at like what's going on with Future and Drake and Kendrick and all that type of shit right now it's all in the music they realize people will actually listen to the song over and over and over to fucking figure out exactly who you yep. don't like and stuff and they keep it real subliminal and I even like I realized through my girl and shit that like Taylor Swift and uh, Adriana or Ariana Grande and shit like that they be doing the same thing they talk about their relationships in the music yeah. and they're really in the tabloids and shit so they yeah. make it so that like, oh, you want to know about my love life? You got to listen to my fucking album and exactly. pick apart the lyrics and yeah. stuff. But some shit like on that is cool. But when it's gang banging shit, that shit get mm. that shit get dangerous. Right. That music shit turned to some. Okay, when I catch you, nigga, I'm gonna pop you. Yeah. That type of shit. So that music shit can be a curse, nigga. So that's why it's a different bracket from Taylor Swift and all them whatever. <laughs> yeah. the then some gang banging shit that shit gets sticky nigga you know what i'm saying so mm. that's a different type of involvement you know what i'm saying so yeah that shit you'll die behind this is somebody right straight up definitely we've, i mean we've all seen it mm -hmm. definitely um there was a while back where big you put out this like statement that i felt like reached a lot of people he basically was just saying the crips need to stop beefing on the internet you guys got to stop going back and forth like this. Like, it was almost like a plea of, like, we got to change what's considered normal. Like, do you frequently feel like that when you look at uh, what's going on between different people on social media and shit? I mean, that's anything. Not just Crips. Everybody beef with people on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, nigga, some, I mean, yeah. Them Chicago niggas do that shit big time. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? Them niggas is on that. But they pioneered it. Yeah. The drill shit, that's where it really, they really the one that really started that, that beef and shit like that. Cause now everybody's copying that shit. But as far as the cripping shit, bro, that's, that's with everything. That's just not cripping. That's blood and that's everybody. Mm. You know, you, cause when a nigga, when you, when niggas beefing, sometimes you don't know where you from. Mm. You feel me? So it's like, nigga, that's just, because it's like, it's not even, niggas can't even say that niggas is really like, I don't know. It's like it's not even a color thing no more, mm. because if that was the case, Crips wouldn't be beefing with Crips, right? Because when if when shit came out, it was Bloods against Crips and all that shit. Now it's not even that. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's Crips against Crips, Bloods against Bloods, and Bloods against Crips, Crips against like because it's all over the place. So mm. it's like nigga, and it's not even about the color. Like I said, it's more of the history. You know what I'm saying? It's like f the color nigga. We ain't beefing because you you you, you red nigga. Mm. We beefing because nigga you did something to the homie. I feel like that's the ultimate fear is that it's like, all right, if there's neighborhoods that don't get along with each other, we already know that the rappers from those neighborhoods are not going to be able to work together or whatever. That's fine. We accept that because that comes from the street. But what becomes like a fear is when you see two rappers beefing over rap shit and then that makes you feel like, oh, shit, is the music going to affect the streets to a sense uh, to the extent where – now there's going to be like large groups of people who don't fuck with each other over shit that basically came from yeah. the music, which yeah. is kind of like a bit more sinister than it going the other way. True. That's like a bitch too. Like a lot of this beef came over a bitch. Yeah. Women. So it just, it just expand because when it comes from one thing, it start being other things involved now. Like it, it could start over a bitch. Then you, then something happened when you killed a homie. Now it's over the homie. Now, then it started going bigger and bigger. You didn't kill two homies. Now, now we're going back and forth. We didn't kill, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's more than just, it's, it's a lot of shit that goes on. Like the rap shit, that shit is like, nigga, you got to watch your, you gotta watch your mouth a lot. No, Straight up. That's a fact. Um, have you paid attention to any of the sort of crypt controversies going on on No Jumper over the past <laughs> few months? 
Yeah, there's I always mean, something going on. Yeah, yeah, I've been seeing that shit. Cause they yeah. think I write this shit. They think I plan it all out. <laughs> something gonna happen. <laughs> I don't, I'm telling you, bro. You gotta stop letting all that shit happen up here, cause then they gonna they gonna ruin your your place of comfort. Yeah, you feel me? Cause it's gonna get it's gonna get crazy on this mother where. Ain't no shit. It gonna be outside this shit, or I'm always me? trying to reel it in. Yeah, but it's gonna get dangerous yeah. because, and it's gonna fall on you mm. at the end of the day because you allow all this shit to happen. You let all these different hoods come up here, and now everybody know where you at. So if one nigga got the spot, the next time the homie get the spot, I already know where he at. Mm. You feel me? So it's, you got to It's, it's, a it's lot cooling of shit. off now. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm, being, I'm just seeing. I'm being what, optimistic. It's cooling off right gonna, now. I'm gonna be real though. Cause I wasn't even gonna do this shit because the, all the smoke that was coming up here. Cause really? I was like, nigga, I don't want to be involved in no LA politics. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it puts you in the middle of shit too. Like, Your man, Snoopy Badass had an awkward situation with Brick Baby out here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they fucked up and they booked them too close together. But I can't really even blame. The I didn't staff. know they beat. Wait, what they beat? Well, because when I did the Snoopy Badass interview, I had Brick Baby with me. And oh then, yeah, and then he starts getting pressure put on him, I think, by other people to not f with Snoopy after the fact, and they had like a little weird encounter on the podcast. Yeah, I've seen that part. I've it got a part. little intense after yeah, that. I've yeah, seen that. I've seen but that. I kind of can't blame the staff here either that they have a hard time keeping up on who exactly doesn't get along with each other. If I'm saying it's gonna get sticky up here. Mm. That shit gonna get sticky where you ain't gonna be able to move your foot out the mud. Mm. You, know, you, gotta, you gotta. A lot of people hit me with that prophecy lately. I gotta just try to. Change the I'm culture. I'm being real because you changing now. You changing this shit to some gang banging shit. Mm. Because most of the niggas you gang bang. I mean, most of the niggas you you uh, interview are gang bangers mm. that I've seen. So now decent percentage at that. this point. Yeah. Yes, a big percentage. And it's like when you're when you're doing the Chicago shit, it's kind of like it's easier to be separate from it. Especially because they way out there. Though. Exactly. Yeah. They ain't got no. You doing L.A. shit. Yeah. You feel me? You doing Long Beach, L.A. shit. All this shit coming here is going to get heated where niggas going to get in their feelings. But even outside of me, I can tell that D.W. Flame and Brick Baby have definitely like got hit up by their people in terms of like less of this should be playing out on camera right. in terms of like actual gang conversations and whatnot. Right. Niggas shouldn't be politicking on no podcast. Because you have done music with both D.W. Flame and Big Sad. Yes. And that's why I stay out the fucking middle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he messy. Cut trying to get me involved in that. You like that? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm staying out of that. Cut. What like, side are you taking it? Nigga, on? ain't no sides over here. I'm out of it. You see, I ain't never respond on nobody's shit. Cut on the set, like nigga. Yeah. Because D W is my nigga. I fuck with D W. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So. Big sad, my nigga, too, and I, I, I don't, I get, I stay out of this shit, cause like I just stay out of it, bro. I feel bad. We want we from the Dino, bro. I ain't, Cause mm. think about it, that's like one of the first things that happened when DW Flame came here is that all of a sudden I got him on a podcast with somebody, and then he ends up having you know certain reactions and then all of a sudden there's a diss song about him and it's all basically because of the fact that he ended up on the same podcast with him. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Brick Baby, where there's been a million. Controversies that he don't want to deal with that have basically yeah. come up because of the podcast and shit. But it's just because once there's this bright ass light on you, it just you become content. People want to make content about you. People want to figure out who you're cool with, who you're not cool with, and then and then do a full blown analysis of it on their platform. Yeah, shit. that's a problem, bro. F that and you know y'all like to put them titles on y'all shit. <laughs> <laughs> they like to put them catchy ass thumbnail titles and shit. Yeah. So that's why you gotta watch what you say on Adam shit. Yeah. Adam gonna put some. Crazy I was just shit looking at Academics' channel and thinking like, God, his titles are better than ours sometimes because they're because <laughs> they're worse. They're like more yes. extreme. They're more making a joke out of shit. Yes. Our titles tend to be like actually what happened in the video. Sometimes I look at his and I'm like, ah, I kind of like that where he's like yeah. he's <laughs> he's clowning the say. situation in his title. Yeah, I better watch what y'all say when y'all coming to No Jumper. Mm, ain't that the truth? Uh, I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, so you had this like brief beef with Doughboy over a beat. Was that like a real thing or is this just some bullshit? It was a, I mean, what did he tell you? Well, I saw him in an interview and he was talking about it. I'm going I'm to tell you the truth. He was kind of dismissing it and then he threw in, oh, he got shot a week later. Oh, yeah, I, I seen that shit. And I was like, wow. Was... I didn't respond to it. I let the fans respond. Like, that's, that's I'm like, nigga, you didn't, come on, cut, nigga, you didn't do that. Let's be real, nigga, that's some street shit that happened from who we beef, 
with the beef shit. So nigga, don't make it seem like you did. That. <laughs> no, that's like, a fun. That's a rapper technique, nigga, though. Boy. I see what you're doing right there. You know, it's like, ain't he got shot a week later. I'm not saying I did it. You but. ain't calling shots, nigga. <laughs> I hate niggas like that. Cause you ain't calling shots. You didn't. You didn't pay no nigga to do it. Cause on the set, nigga, it happened because of me. Mm. And what you know, what I'm saying so. But with him, cause like, <sighs> it's no beef with this this nigga. Like, I already I already spooked cause already. Cause I didn't. Man, I already spooked cuz, nigga, on the set I did. So it's like, nigga, I'm not about to go back and forth with you cuz, like, man, no, never. How'd you spook him? You gave him a phone call? I called, I called we FaceTime, bro. That nigga was telling me, he was basically begging cuz on the set. Man, you can ask any nigga that was there, you can ask, I ain't even gonna put niggas' names on there, but niggas that was there, the nigga was like, bro, he's like, man, I ain't, I'm cool. I'm, I'm not even like, nigga, I f with you, bro. I'm 30 some years old. I ain't into all that shit. I ain't no gang bang. Tell me all this shit. He's telling me all this shit, bro. But I see him post some bullshit. That's why I say I stay in my lane because niggas lie a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna lie about nothing. If I got my ass whooped, I'm gonna tell you. You feel me? Because what, what gangster ain't never got their ass whooped? You feel me? Or what nigga ain't never took a L? You feel me? But I'm not going to ever sit there and let a nigga play on my name like that, bro. Like, nigga, you didn't get me shot, nigga. You didn't do anything to me, bro. Like, nigga, you didn't pull up. You didn't pay no nigga to do that. You, you know what I'm saying? So, but it's not beef with cuz. Like, cuz you ain't nobody. Like, nigga, you ain't no threat to me. Because when I pulled up on you, you shook the spot. Straight up, nigga, we FaceTime each other. I'm like, cover you at, nigga. That I, I seen you post a video, it but it was, it was on mute. He didn't post all of it, but it was on mute. Nigga, I pulled up on Cuz. He told me, meet me right here. Nigga, I met him right there. Cuz on the set, and he shook the spot. He wasn't even there. And I called him back, like, cover you at, nigga. Like, nigga, like, I pull up on you, nigga. Like, for real, I really pull up on a nigga, like, for real. But I just stopped, like, nigga, I'm not going to chase this dude, bro. Mm. So niggas be putting that little front on like they really doing shit. Don't let them lie to you like that. Because she was lying like a motherfucker. You didn't give me pop, nigga. I seen all the comments. Like, they like, this nigga think he got him pop. I'm like, come on, nigga. You sound Because he didn't so say that he did. He just kind of like alluded but like, to but it, But it right? looked like it. <laughs> yeah, Like, right. nigga, you try to make it seem like, oh, you was the reason behind it. Right. Nigga, shut up. Cause, Wait, nigga, oh, what a coincidence. Nigga, you the one that got popped up from running your mouth. What, what did happen in that situation when you got shot? Just recently, because I know you had a few encounters over no, the years. No, 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 I didn't get shot recently. Oh, this is an old one. Yeah, that was the first time I got shot. Oh, okay, okay. And he trying to make it seem like it was that, nigga. After I got popped, I ain't about to keep running to the bullshit to keep let it happen again. Like mm -hmm. I said, I ain't making it easy for a nigga. You feel me? I ain't made it easy for them niggas over there, cause they failed their mission. I'm not making it easy again. Mm -hmm. You feel me? If you catch me, if you catch me, catch me. But I'm not gonna make it easy for you. Mm -hmm. Straight up, I'm not making it easy. I feel it. Um, Okay, I just wanted to get your perspective on this. We recently were having a conversation about who's the king of Long Beach. And then we start getting into the conversation of should Snoop be in this conversation? Because typically when we're talking about the king in terms of like rapping, we're kind of talking about someone who's like really putting out music over and over, like right now, really trying to hold that throne. Whereas... Snoop has kind of like graduated into like a, a elder statesman type role where he's not he doesn't seem like he's really like judging himself by the success of his music in the way that like a lot of younger artists were. Would you consider him to be in that conversation I mean, or do you think that that's right music. to kind of look? Yeah, he still puts out music, but I don't feel like he's Constantly he's like he not trying to justify his career through that. It's yeah. just for fun. It's, it's just because he, he already made because he likes it. Yeah. Um. At the end of the year, the king of Long Beach, mm. period. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're talking about, you just talking about music or you just talking about successfulness? Like I think both, but I think he wins on both. He wins on both of them. And, and you can include the whole L.A. as a who, rapper. Who's, who's he's, really he's the most successful. Long Beach? That's, who really? He's the most successful for the longest period of time, and you can Ever. include all of L.A. Yeah, it's like, who the f***? But who who from Long Beach is really putting on that's in his, that's even, that's even close to his level, that's in the a uh, uh, a raw wave level mm. or or savvy third savvy third savvy, savvy hardest but it's but a, he's I, at a very different place in I mean his if life. you're talking about in the levels of them niggas like savvy third DW who else is from there though OT OT okay OT Ben Staples okay see I didn't know Ben Staples was from there well it's a lot of shit to go on you got to really you got to really sit there and look because that's different brackets 
is different like, successful I'm brackets. But hey, if you go th- if you go through them bra- brackets, Snoop is at the top, mm. irregardless. Irregardless, he's at the top. Then you got another bracket you can compare them other niggas with. Mm. You feel me? Like an OT bracket? Who's in OT bracket? Is it Vince Staples or is Vince Staples higher than him? But OT's spot is different too because he makes more like pop type shit. He's one been out for longer. He made hits. He made one hit. Yeah. He made, I ain't gonna say one hit a quit, but he made hits, single hits. You feel me? So he might, he might even be the king of it. OT's mega successful and mega, mega rich and has had gigantic hits compared to almost everybody that we just put on the That's list of I'm people saying. from Long Beach, you know? So it'll probably be him next. I don't know who's all from Lone Beach that's rapping right now. Right. But I know OT been doing hella good too. Who else is from Lone Beach? Shit. This, oh yeah, Sav did it from Lone Beach. Why but, didn't I'm here? That nigga oh, ain't oh, from, oh, oh, I thought he from Alabama. He got put on. He said, hey, oh. in his words, put offs exist and put ons exist. He kept a real gangster. You, I can't wait till y'all see this interview we just did. He was keeping that mega gangster. Oh, I mean, shit. <laughs> Sometimes niggas got to go through the trials and tribulations, too. Like, nigga, you got to see what it's like, too. Mm. That shit hurt. <laughs> you going to lose this pain and crying and this, this happiness behind this. Like, nigga, you don't mm. even know the roots of your hood. Mm. A lot of niggas get put in the hood, don't even know the roots of it. So, I mean, I just... I feel you. I saw you had a song called Domestic Violence, and I thought it was going to be about domestic violence, but it was about beating the up. Yes. <laughs> that song was slapper, too. That was good, yeah. That's the mother. I just wanted slapper. to say that sentence, the, the sentence I just said. I already had that. But in my that's head. dope, though. You see, I'll be coming up with my titles, <laughs> bro. Good, yeah. My titles be crazy because mm. it makes sense. I like to come up with some strange, fucking dope ass titles of my songs. I was like, is this going to be a song about the one time he beat his girl up? Like, that's crazy. One time I beat the coochie up. Oh. <laughs> beat it up, nigga. Beat that motherfucker. Beat the brakes off that bitch. That's right. For the Dino. <laughs> um, okay, so what else are you working on right now, like in terms of where where you feel like you're at, what you need to do to get to the next level? Like, how how are you looking at where you're at in your career right now? Uh, I feel like I said I gotta I gotta do features. Mm. I got I gotta gravitate a different artist fan base. I have to um, start networking more again outside my box, coming out to shit because I'm an antisocial nigga. On oh, my mama, I'm very antisocial, and I know as an artist. I have to step out of that element here and there sometimes. You feel mm. me? But I'm very antisocial. Wasn't I trying to set up a feature for you last time? I I don't know. Well, I remember you was trying to get me to do something with AD. That's what I'm saying. Ironically, yeah, we, we uh, you not, were trying not to get me so cool to do now, with but AD. but there was a point, and I remember yeah. you kind of like bailed. I felt like you you felt a little fishy about the situation. You might have not have thought that it was. I think official. I was. I think it was no. I think it was me being not not comfortable because I was going through shit. Mm. So and that's another thing. I let that shit. I'm telling you, I be going through shit and I let shit f me up. And but I'm very antisocial, dude. Mm-hmm. Like getting out of my element is very hard. Cause like you niggas would tell me to pull up somewhere, I probably won't come. Mm-hmm. You know, but if I feel like if it's important, like now I'm starting to do it. Mm-hmm. Like I don't give a f- what I gotta do, I gotta come out. I gotta come out because this might be a good look. Right. This might be a good look. Like, man, I just did something on Thesler too. Like I almost didn't go to that. You remember? I was about to bail on that. And they told me, like, man, just come out, man. They motivated me. Like, mm-hmm. bro, just come out, do this and that, man. Uh, this is a big, this is a great look for you, da da da. And I'm like, I ain't got nothing written or nothing. This and I'm like, I'm just gonna come. And I did. But I feel like those are the biggest thing. I got a, I got a, I got a few singles coming out too. I got a song called, like I said, it's a lot of Mackin. That's one of my favorite songs. Um, I got a tape already called um, All Dogs Go to Heaven. I have to release that like in what, November? October. October, November, one of them. And uh, I've been letting that shit, you know, get ran through. Um, but yeah, I got, I'm just waiting for the right moment, bro. Mm. It's going to come eventually if I keep grinding. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've been shadow banned. I've been shadow banned. So you feel that shit on the gram or whatever? I that, feel it. Yeah. I feel it. I see it. It's a lot. If you look at my name right now on YouTube, you will not find my name. Mm. You, my shit used to pop up when you, as soon as you type in doggy style or whatever, and you get to like style, all my resume come up. You type in doggy style, you ain't gonna see shit. Really? On my mama cut, you ain't gonna see shit. And then on my Instagram, they got me stagnant at at a certain amount of followers. Like I'm at a hundred and what sixty six thousand, 
And it's taking me forever to get up. Like, I didn't got posted on Snoop shit, like, constantly. I ain't gained no followers. Like, and then I, and then they hit me up. Instagram hit me up. They gave me on my status. They tell me I can't be shown to non-followers. Mm. And I've been like that for, like, two and a half, three years. Same. Three years. Yeah, I, I can't figure out how to get rid of it either. I got rid of it, right? I kept appealing it. And they let me, they let me get everything better for what? Like, a few weeks ago. I finally had got it back a few weeks ago. And they banned me again. Really? Cause people reporting my shit, bro. Wow. People re reporting my shit as true shit. Like, nigga, I don't even post nothing. Say, what the yeah. fuck is you talking about? But I noticed you be blur uh, blurring out the booties I blur, on Instagram. I because blur of them that, out, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I blur them out just because of that. Right. Because I don't want to get flagged or mm. none of that shit. So I blur out the butt. If you want to go see the butt, go on YouTube. Yeah. You feel me? But I blur all that shit out because I already lost my account. You know what's funny? I lost my account. Uh, what a few days before we was about to put out the Snoop feature song. Oh, really? I lost it. Wow. They, they took my account, bro. I lost everything. I was in my feelings on the set because that's the only thing I use. I don't use Twitter. That shit, I can't, I can't gravitate to it. Mm. I don't use Twitter. I don't use nothing else. That's the only thing I really use. And I was like, bro, like I, I had another account though that I uh, uh my little slop low page, but it didn't have no followers. It only had like seven thousand followers. But I ain't gonna lie, that shit, I gained like 40,000 followers in like, what, a few days on that motherfucker? Because I was posting my Seawalk videos. Right. And that shit be going up all the time. And that page wasn't shadow banned or nothing. Mm. But now that page becoming the same as my main page. Cause like, it's like people are, I got haters. Cause. We need a Crip, uh, Crip Walk Olympics. You, Crip Mac, and OT Genesis. I will out walk. Crip Mac, for sure, for sure. Really? He's not even. He's my, in a different weight class, though. He's not. <laughs> he could be in my weight class. I'll, I'll, and I fuck with Crip Mac because he's a genuine nigga. I'll be, you know, I fuck with Cub. But on the set, I would, I would outwalk. Man, I would outwalk that nigga. Mm. OT, I, I, I think I'll I, I walk Cuz too. Oh, shit. On the okay. set, I'll outwalk that nigga too. But OT, hard. Mm. But I'll, 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 man, cuz I'll, I'll walk. I'll outwalk any nigga you put against me. Nigga, you can have them niggas lined up, cuz I'll outwalk them, nigga. Mm. You feel me? If I'm feeling it, I gotta have some <laughs> liquor in me, though. Yeah. Because that's time when my feet get glued to the floor and I can't do what I wanna do. Really? But I can outwalk a lot of niggas, bro. You ever get rusty? Just don't do it for a few months Hell and then yeah. you get to try to do it and it's a little and tough. Don't do it. Really? Ask voice. That nigga voice, every time you try and give me the sea walk in my videos, I can't do it. Really? Yeah, I just gotta, gotta have it in me. Really come out of you in that moment to make me see walk the right way. Mm -hmm. Yep, I gotta drink something or I gotta have the right shoes on. You feel me? I could walk, but it's not gonna. If I have some bullshit shoes on, I could walk, but it's not gonna be like my best walk. It's not. Wow. But I'm telling you, I, I walk a lot of niggas because I really see walk. I don't do all that other shit with sloppy niggas. Look at my footwork; it's not sloppy. Hmm. A lot of these niggas, I feel like I said. I Crip Matt, but his feet, his footwork sloppy, cuz. Mm. Well, he's a sloppy guy, to be totally honest, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a lot of niggas that's, that's got sloppy footwork, and people be thinking, oh, he dope. Oh, nigga, what? Damn. OT dope. You know, it's a lot of niggas that I do know that Seawalk is dope. OT, um. Dub C still. Man, Dub C, his shit is the reason. Everybody be thinking he the king, too. And I feel like he, he the king because. A lot of people pivot off of that shit. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, they do a lot of shit that he does. But you're he saying did. if you compare the old, his older style it's to not the current the, generation, it wouldn't no. hold up? No. Really? Okay. No. And Dub C Horror, too, but mm. in, in that, in that fucking with us, no. Really? No, because I got that old walk, too, but nigga, I really walk. <laughs> we used to sit there and rewind the Up and Smoke VHS tape over and over and over to see Dub C doing that because it was just like a two, three second clip. And it looked so crazy, but it was so quick that we like couldn't really figure out how the fuck his feet were actually doing mm -hmm. that. And this is like before you could like Google shit or look shit up on YouTube. So you know that, who got the hardest walk, though? Space Ghost. Really? I think that's his name. Space Ghost or Ghost. You from somewhere out here in L.A., that nigga walk is cold. Really? Yeah, I feel like he was, that nigga smooth with it. He's a cold walker because he really walking. That's what I'm saying. He ain't clown walking. He mm. really walking. Look him up, Ghost. That nigga really walking. That nigga can see walk like a mother. Damn, He an older cat, out. too. He an older cat. Okay. See walking cold. That's what's up. Uh, I appreciate you coming through. No doubt, and, man. And giving us the update and everything. I'm definitely rooting for you. I believe that the doggy style... Revolution has not reached its full apex yet. You know, you're yeah, like yeah. a real, like locally bred, important talent, and I feel like it's important that that your movement succeeds in the long run. Appreciate you, man. It's going to succeed as long as I keep pushing.
Definitely. Got nowhere else to go but up. Definitely. And is have you seen from you coming out, is there up-and-coming talent coming out of your area that has been motivated by your success? I'm pretty sure all them niggas that got motivated from me okay. that's coming on behind me. Yeah. You feel me? Because, I mean, especially the music I make, a lot of you women, a lot of people probably won't gravitate to it. They probably be like, oh, cuz ain't gonna make it. Or the cut ain't gonna, you know, cuz the music I make. Mm -hmm. I make the gangster shit. West Coast, all, you know, that shit, a lot of that shit. You know, but they been seeing it and a lot of people show me respect out there, you feel me? So, But a lot of people didn't made it. A lot of people going further. A lot of people, you know, got, I mean, shit. But niggas know where it started. Straight sure. up. Doggy style. Appreciate you, man. No doubt, man. Appreciate you. Uh, My guy. Thank you so much. Doggy style. Go turn them up on all platforms. No jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram. Like, comment, and subscribe. I already know you guys all left comments saying like, oh, it's a doggy style interview and there's a dog in it. Oh, yeah. This dog Harry is co-starring in all my interviews this week. Yeah, laying down. Now he, he out. Asked out. Ralphie. Yeah, St. Bernardino Doodle right here, man. St. Bernardino. <laughs> San Bernardino. San Bernardino.